What is up, YouTube? We're doing an analysis today on Justin Parnell. This is going to be a good one. Got some cool stuff to look at. Uh, we have Gerd Cantor over here to the left as a reference. I know I use him all the time as a reference, but uh, you're probably thinking I'm like a Gerd Cantor fanboy. Totally am, actually, but he also just does a lot of things right. So that's why I use him as a reference, and I just have a lot of footage of him. Justin, this is an awesome throw. Uh, before I show you guys anything, we're going to watch each clip three times. Very good. Awesome stuff going on here. Let's watch Gerd real quick, see what he's got cooking. So yes, this. I always thought this throw was pretty weird because his high point was way over to the left here and he still throws it pretty flat, which is cool. Uh, Nonetheless, I think this is a great throw because he's in a wet circle and everything's pretty strict and under control here. So this is a great video. Justin, let's see what we got going on here. Uh, I watched this a few times and just figured out a few things. Let's start with some lower body, okay? Let's see. So right when this foot comes off the ground, first frame off the ground, let's compare it to Gerd over here. Oops, that is good. Um, I'm not going to, sorry, this is taking forever. That's good, that's solid. You're gonna see in our future slides right here that your left arm is not only in this frame, but in the future ones, uh, opening up a little aggressive, um, which would probably be sick for, eh, I'm not gonna say that. I'd say it suits the left arm movement here is better suited for shot put, but uh, don't worry about that. Let's see. What I love about this, though, is that let me get my pen out, my magic pen. You have your left arm up high, uh, which follows your orbit. Like I've said before, the orbit, the high and low points of your discus are usually very similar to the high and low points of your left arm. And you do a good job of setting it up here. One thing that people will probably notice about your throw is that your orbit is awesome. Look at that. Look at that. We got the high point. High point up here. Gerd is just insane with the high point. Um, but Justin, that is awesome that you're able to do that. Not a lot of folks have that down. But back to, sorry, I got off track. This left arm, it is. It is a little fast. It's a little early. From here to here, it just rips open. Um, ends up ripping your upper body open a little bit. But it seems like you manage to stay pretty separated here. Um, so usually I would say hold that left arm back a little more. But this is probably the least of your concerns right now. There's a few other things we got to work on. This sweep leg is interesting. So I'm gonna let you watch the sweep leg real quick. Check it out. Watch the bend in the knee. Knees bent, 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 bent. Knee stays bent about the whole time. Now when I go watch Gerd, bent knee, totally straight leg, and then goes back to being bent. And boom, there we have contact. I'm gonna find the frame where this foot first contacts the ground. Let's compare. Let's see what we got. So not bad. As you can see, you are a little more opened up with your upper body. If I were to highlight left arm, right arm, at the con point in time where your right foot comes down, and then I highlight GERD, you can see there's a pretty big difference in the amount of separation that he has versus you. One thing you're doing amazing here though, and round of applause for this is 
that leg is already ahead. One of the things I like to say is when this right foot hits this, the ground right here, you want your left foot to be about the same distance away from the back of the circle. Uh, or you could say the same distance away from the camera. So let's say your right foot is here. Your left foot is just right in the air behind it right here. Look at that. You got tight knees. Absolutely love that. So that is one thing I will say you are doing fantastically well with your lower body is getting your lower body ahead right here. So round of applause to you. Let's look at Gerd. He does the same thing. That left leg up in the air right here is about the same distance when his right foot comes down. Uh, only big difference that I'm pointing out right here is just how... So let me show you this. Contact. And then... So if I put... If I pause Gerd when he has his upper body in the same position as yours... Look at that. He's already way ahead. That left foot is already further ahead than yours is. So what I would offer as a solution is, and this is, as I mentioned, coming from an issue in the back, this left arm is just ripping you open a little bit early. Uh, I would tell you to slow it down a little bit from here to here. Let it kind of drag behind a little bit. Leave that discus behind a little further, which you are doing pretty well, but you can see if we watch, or if I can do slow motion. Watch the discus, it starts getting ahead right there. Because of your left arm ripping from here to here, that discus is like, okay, we got more tension, let's go. And it starts going, it starts going, and it gets opened up before you really want it to. I must admit, this is something that I am not very good at. Um, I have the same issue. My discus op starts opening up or accelerates a little too soon. And then by the time I'm right here, I don't really feel like I have a lot of ability to manipulate the speed of that discus. It's just kind of a little, quick little pop rather than a catching it totally separated and then slowly smash it from here to here. But uh, you're doing that well. Let's keep talking about this. So left arm, you need to slow it down a little bit from here. You can see that chest is just opening up. Chest is opening up. Let's let's check out that foot in the middle of the circle. Let's see if it turns. Ah, uh, well, well, well. It does not do what we want. This is amazing, but then it, it kind of stops turning. And I could attribute this to your left leg kind of blocking you off a little bit. You're a little blocked off, meaning if I were to draw a line from your toe to toe, that line would go down the left sector line. Look at that. Literally goes down the left sector line. Um, for you, if I were to do that, toe to toe when you land, taking you in that direction. So that is one thing that makes it impossible to really turn that foot around when you're blocked off like that. Um, your foot leaves the ground. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something real quick. I'm not saying be Gerd Cantor, but I'm gonna use him here. Right at the frame when your foot leaves the ground, it's pointing towards the, I'll say your shoelaces are pointing towards the right sector line. Let's look at one more thing. Your hips are pointing looks like that direction I'll give you anywhere over there let's look at Gerd real quick when his right foot leaves the ground I'm gonna say right there just to prove my point um, when his right foot leaves the ground it's fully turned you could argue that his foot left the ground in this frame um, we're gonna say, I wish there was a frame in between because that is a lot of change. Let's go with this frame. You can see his shoelaces. If you were to make a laser coming out of the top of his foot, it'd probably be pointing down the middle of the sector. And then if I gave myself one extra frame, 
those shoelaces are pointing down the left sector line. Another thing, let's look at where the hips are pointing. His hips are, and he's very good at this. Watch those hips. Boom, right there. They're pointing almost totally down the left sector line. Probably somewhere in this area, they're pointing that way. Um, that's the most important thing. I've said this a million times, I'll say it a million more. The reason we turn that right foot in the middle is not to just to turn the right foot. I mean, it's not a huge deal. It's only a huge deal because it's an indicator where the hips are turning. <clears throat> you can't really turn that foot a whole lot if the hips are blocked off. So you block off your hips, foot can't turn, uh, which I guess is an indicator of an indicator, blah, 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 sort of paradigm, paradox, <laughs> that your hips aren't turning. So let's look at something else. When you release the disc, look at where your hips are pointing. You're kind of facing straight into the sector you're pushing that discus rather than getting your hips. Look look at his face. Everything, his chest, his hips, his knees, his toes, all pointing down the left sector line because that is what causes the stretch right here. He's not pushing that discus. He's pulling <coughs> his left side, the left side of his body around, pointing the right side of his body towards... Let me make some... Art. Pointing the right, kind of trying to drag the right side of his body around and throw it into the left sector line. Whereas you're doing that just not as well. And what ends up happening is you kind of just push your chest into the sector and you end up kind of trying to slam that disc, trying to give it a little bit of love when it's too late. This is a great, good thing to think about though is how I had that illustrated how the left side of the body is really doing everything here. Left side is what pulls the right side around. If you rely on your right side to push, you're not going to throw nearly as far. Let's see. <clears throat> There's a few more things I wanted to point out. So yeah, a little blocked off there. Need to fix that. Need to get this left leg, get your left toes landing right here. Boom, look at that, that's your imaginary leg, and that's way cooler. Let's look at Gerd, see that? Get that imaginary leg, not bad. Let's see what else we got. One thing I will applaud you for though, is your separation here. Looks like right when we have contact, let me get that right. Right when we have contact, folks, look at this. That is separation. So, you've done a good job of recovering in the middle, but, and I'm so happy this came up because I love to talk about this. This is a big deal because if you have no separation in the middle and then you're able to build separation, what has to happen? Go ahead, think about it. That's right, you're going to have to slow something down in the middle in order to get back to here. Now, I'll say you're not a very good example of this in a, in, in a good way. Uh, people do this much worse. Whenever you see someone pause in the middle, which you're not really doing. Uh, one second, let me fix the speed. There's not a huge pause in the middle, but when you do see, pe see people pause in the middle, 99% of the time, it's because they, they rip the upper body ahead. They get that discus ahead of the legs, and then they're in the middle, and they're way opened up. They're like, crap, I'm opened up. I need to rebuild that separation. And then this will all stop where it's at while the lower body gets ahead, and then boom, they get back into their separation. <clears throat> But as they land, their lower body is going zero miles an hour, hypothet like hypothetically, they 
they have to restart the lower body from here. And it ends up just being a power throw. A power throw with, with extra moves. What you want is to land with the upper body already going 50 miles an hour. And then build it up to 100. Instead of start at 0 and build it up to 50. So you want... I, I don't like it when people say make the upper body move slow. Even though I say that. You want it to be relatively slow or dragging behind your lower body you still want the upper body to be fast though i mean that's that's where the discus is at it has to be very quick see he's still so fast out of the back but his lower body is so fast that he can land when he lands, that discus is already traveling so fast. So he doesn't have to try so hard to get it from 0 to 100. He's already going 50 miles an hour. So he applies all the power he has, and he can get it going much faster than anyone else can. So think about that. When you land, you already want to be going as fast as possible with the upper body, but still separated. I know that's a different kind of way of looking at it. I haven't heard anyone else say that, but... That's that's a great way to think about it. And I <clears throat> I can't really imagine being wrong about that. There's who's gonna argue, oh yeah, you wanna land going slow. Um if this discus is traveling faster than crap and you can land in a perfect position and you're able to get it making get it going faster and faster right here, that's a win win. So there's not a lot of logic that doesn't back that up. Few more things. Um, yeah, that right foot, even after it comes off the ground, your shoelaces never really point towards the left sector line until like here. Check this out. Right here, I'm gonna try to. One sec. I'm going to put your your body in the same position. All right. So right now, I'd say looking just at this right here, your hips, you know, your butt's pointing that way, meaning your hips are pointing that way. Same as Gerd Cantor. He's about the same position. His chest is facing down that left sector. I think I got you a little head. Your chest is starting to face down that left sector. He still has the discus in his hand and is just now coming off the ground. But you are clear off the ground and have already released that discus pretty much. Um, my point being, you're just hit, you're hitting the position. You're just hitting it when it's too late. You need to get your body into that position. While the discus is like back here. Or think about trying to get it around there. Getting that ch chest pushing out as hard as you can into the left sector. Uh, that's going to give you the crazy stretch and pop that you need to throw for. Let me look at your block arm real quick. I love that. I love that. Let's look at Gerd. One thing I do like about what he does is he pulls that left arm kind of, if I were to exaggerate, back into there, like into a pocket. I wish there was a better way for me to explain that. He like rips it back into this position. What you're kind of doing is you're, you're really tucking it hard, um, which I can't say is bad. It's, it's getting the job done. When that left arm accelerates, that's going to give you everything. I think the issue here is not your left arm, so I'm not even going to tell you to fix anything with your left arm. I'm not going to try to fix something if it's not broken. I think any issues with the upper body here are caused by the lower body. You're blocked off. You're not able to turn that right foot. So, big thing here is fix the stance. Yeah, let's do a little quick conclusion. 
Slow down the left arm right here. So the sweep I like, if you wanted to, you could work on hitting that extension and then digging the inside of your foot in. But like I said, I'm not going to fix something that's not broken. You're still able to drive the inside of your foot in. You land into the center of the circle very, very well. This is amazing. Keep a hold of this. Do not let this go away because what you have here is going to catapult you ahead of most people. So I'm not going to fix that sweep leg. I'm not going to tell you to change anything. All I want you to do is <clears throat> be a little, little bit more relaxed with the upper body here because as I mentioned, you're a little ahead right here. This is where you start getting a little ahead. Then it looks like it slows down a little bit. You catch it with good separation still. Amazing job there, but you're blocked off. Um, and this might be an issue actually. Perhaps if your left, left foot up here had to travel the extra distance and get down up here, <clears throat> maybe it wouldn't get down until right there. And maybe you wouldn't be very separated. You wouldn't have a lot of separation. So maybe that is an issue. That's just food for thought. So again, slow down upper body out of the back. Just a little tiny bit right here. Don't rip it open as hard. Fix the stance. Don't block off. And again, all this stems from the same thing. But in your finish, you know, if you can fix that stance, you're going to be able to hit that right there. Think about his whole body is facing on the left sector line. That's what we want to happen at the moment of release. And I haven't heard a lot of people ever point that out very much, but that's the way I think about it. But um, Justin, amazing job. Uh, I look forward to getting more videos from you and keeping up with your progress. And everyone else, if you're wondering, oh, why does Justin get this 20-minute technical analysis? <clears throat> Look, usually they're not 20 minutes, um, so I'm not going to promise everyone technical analysis that are 20 minutes long, but Justin bought the program that I sell, uh, which you can get on Instagram. So Justin has access to a whole entire 12 months of weight room training, uh, you know, plyometrics training, training in the circle. You know, he has access to information that will guide him to say, hey, how many throws am I going to throw on April 21st? Of these throws, how many are power throws, half turns, if any, uh, full throw non-reverses, full throw reverse throws? Am I going to be throwing heavy today? Am I throwing light? All this works together with the in-circle and out-of-circle training program. They, they work together to get you to throw some big numbers during season and build up your foundation during the off-season. Um, as any program should, but the reason I made that is just because not a lot of people have access to something that totally guides their throwing uh, training. You know, some kids have no idea how many throws they should be doing. I've talked to a lot of kids who will do like 20 power throws a day and then like five full throws. That's horrible. You're going to you're gonna destroy yourself, unless it's off season. Someone could probably argue that that's a decent approach, but Whatever, whatever. If you guys are interested, message me on Instagram. Justin, awesome job, buddy. And uh, thanks for watching, guys.